right guys welcome back uh, so we got another project we're working on and this is going to be a, a portable carport that i actually had up last year and what happened was um the first snow that we got i had it up half the summer the first snow that we got was about 10 or 11 inches well my truck was parked under it and she buckled so um, I took some measurements. We got a few spots that are pretty messed up, so I got um, some new metal here. First thing I did, though, was measure this stuff, and it turns out it's like 22 gauge metal. I mean, just ridiculous. Now, this is something that I got from a neighbor. Um, they were my, fortunately, my old neighbor passed away, um, and then his family came and had an estate sale and took care of the whole situation. Well, they gave me that one. And so this one here is actually from Harbor Freight and it's stood up for the last couple of years perfectly. And I ended up taking a measurement of this and it's like 18 gauge, 17 gauge, 18 gauge. And so um, that's also round. And everybody says that round is a little bit stronger than square supposedly. So I went and um, found the local metal shop here or distributor and um, I got me 11 pieces of I think they said it was like 15 or 16 gauge it's a little over a 16th inch thickness for the walls but I figured this would be pretty stout I have like I said I got 11 pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and cut six seven foot legs and I know that it's round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue to use these joints. They look like they're cut pretty strong. I measured them. They're actually thicker gauge. They are, uh, I think it's about the same gauge as the Harbor Freight carport I got over there. So I'm pretty confident that these will be fine. And what I'm gonna end up doing, because I have a, it's a 10 by 20 carport, this middle section I'm gonna replace the metal on. These two sides here, I'm just gonna leave. I think most of the weight will be on this center portion and the legs. So I'm making all new legs. Those are six and a half foot legs. I'm gonna go with seven foot legs. And then there are three sets of supports that go out to give me the peak. You know, obviously like that. So those are about 63 inches. I'm gonna replace all three sets of those. And then, like I said, the middle portion and then the legs. So um, what I did measure was the inside diameter of all those joints, as well as the old legs and the rest of it. And I got an inch and three eighths outer diameter. This is 0.095. So I think that is over a 16th. They said it's like 12 gauge, so got that. I think that was like 21 bucks. Altogether, I also got, um, let's see. I also ended up getting these right here. These are quarter inch thick, four inches diameter, gussets. And so these I'm actually going to use for heat. So those will get welded on dead center. And what I plan on doing is drilling at least one hole a piece, I think, and that would be enough. Maybe two, one on each side. And I would like to anchor those to the cement. We'll see how it all goes. Um, last year I had the old port anchored down with with, tie, with basically guy wires and they just, yeah, they were in the way. It was just a pain in the butt. So I figure um, this will get me started and get me a nice form and lots of strength. And then what I'll do, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do it in the the fall I mean we're like mid-summer this is August you know so I don't know if I'm gonna wait a couple months and then redo the rest of it as far as the two 
uh, 20 foot runs on the side or if I'm going to even go as far as replacing all the joints and just welding everything together. What I had an idea of was to remake these so I would make them flat on the top and then a 22 degree angle downward. And then I would put a plate on the end of this that stood up maybe like three eighths of an inch above it and below it. And then I could drill four, hole, four holes, two on top, two on bottom. And then the other piece that would butt up against it, I would weld a piece the same exact size as the plate that's on the side of this. It's the same four holes. And then I could just bolt them together. I could even go as far as welding the bolts to this piece right here. And then I could totally disassemble the thing if I wanted to. But, I mean, because I looked into... I looked into getting a full carport and one that's you know permanent. They're like twelve hundred dollars minimum. And I tried to get. I went to the same company and they quoted me, I think, um, eighth inch walls on one and three eighths pipe, just like this stuff. And I was gonna. I calculated it out that I would need roughly. 132 feet so they quoted me a thousand like a thousand seventy bucks so I was like no that ain't happening I'm not doing that so this will get me through for now I think so that's what we're gonna do um, I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys up and uh, we'll get started All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of the tools that I use here. Obviously, I got my angle grinder here, six four and a half angle angle grinder. Uh, I got some 40 grit metal, 1 16th inch, 13,300 max RPM cutting wheels. I got my roofing square. <laughs> Obviously, you need uh, protective glasses for stuff like this. It goes on a plate safe. Got your wire brush. I also have a wire wheel. This used to be. A knotted wire wheel but um, yeah it's kind of looking a little shabby at this point but then uh, I got this is just a like a, uh, a wax pen and that's you know pretty good for marking the steel but I also have Sharpie that I'll use occasionally and then I got my carbide tip scratcher here. It's kind of like a scratch all, a modern scratch all. And then this is obviously the wrench for the angle grinder. I got me some needle nose, that way I can uh, clip off the wire, have a nice fresh end on my welder. And then just a couple of uh, vice grips there. Ear protection for sure when I'm angle grinding. And obviously the old Fat Max 30 foot there. And I want to stress the fact that you guys, when you're welding, you definitely want to wear safety glasses under your helmet because you can have weld pop up into your helmet and bounce up into your face or your eyes or something. So just play it safe, guys. Always make sure you wear your safety glasses. So, all right, um, that's pretty much it for the stuff that I use. So let's go ahead and get this process started. All right, so the first thing we do is measure out these top pieces here, and uh, we'll go ahead and get the length from outside of each of the joints, and then measure that piece. And we'll get that cut up. So 
we're gonna go with probably I'll just go right on 114 if I if these are long enough. They're all the same length as well. <laughs> so these are 113 and a half inches. So I think I'm not gonna cut anything. I'm just gonna go with that. Awesome. So I don't I'm not sure if I actually told you what I was gonna do. So this is going to I'm gonna cut two inch pieces off here, and these are gonna get welded onto the end of the square stock. And what'll happen is that'll slip into the end of these joints, these joints here. So. Yep, that'll work out well. So this will go a lot faster than I thought.
lot sturdier than the old setup. Awesome. All right, so this is where I'm at right now. I'm on the last weld here. And I'm kind of learning as I go how to, you know, get the best welds out of here. These ones I kind of, I was welding from, sorry, welding from the top down just to try and get the, the weld to come down, but then um, I ended up turning my wire speed down and just a hair and that helped to not burn the um, the post metal out the square tubing because I was you know I was at a is the lowest voltage that I can go and so you know I can't go any lower so I was at almost two and I turned it down to just over one and a half and it seems like that speed's working out real well, allowing me to get a better a better bead that I can do on that I could actually use on top to where it just doesn't burn through that stuff. So that's where I'm at. These are the six posts. I have the one section done right there. That's the top. And then after that, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and see if the other two lengths like this, because you have one for each side, I'm going to see if the original pieces are long enough, If they're and if they're not, I'm just going to go get four more, four more of those posts, I mean those uh, square tubing pieces, they're nine, like 113 and a half inches. So... I figured it'd be, uh, they're, they're a hair longer than the originals, so, I mean, they're only 12 bucks a piece, so I figured, what the heck, why not? May as well, you know, make it to where it's all uniform and all strong, and it's just the joints that I'm using, so we'll see how that goes. But, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set you up, you guys can weld a little, or uh, watch a little bit of welding, I guess. Always wear your safety glasses under your helmet, folks.
so that's as good as these are gonna get. I'm not doing a bang up job, you know, super fancy or anything, but. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other pieces set up. These are the last pieces I need to do. Look at how thin that metal is. So, that's why it bent.
All right, so that's it. I went ahead and bought some extra, bought four extra pieces. I had extra posts left over, so, or um, extra round stock. So I went ahead and made four for the side as well, so. All right, the next step is to, uh, I'm probably gonna end up just spraying all the bare metal and then uh, I'm gonna assemble it. So stay tuned. All right, so I got the canopy portion put together and I ended up getting some white flex seal. Yeah, this stuff's worked pretty good for me in the past, so I figure I'm going to just coat all the joints with this And you can see over there that I already hit the ends of the posts. So this stuff's supposed to seep into all the cracks. Hopefully this will seal it up pretty well. It looked like I was hitting random spots, but these were actually spots where I ground down the metal for my grounding cable. So. And it says this is supposed to need, it's supposed to have like 48 hours to dry. Oh, or 24 to 48 hours. So. And I think it's 48 hours after for the next coat. But I think that'll do it. I'm tempted to put these up right now. That way they can kind of seal into the frame. Okay, so these are the braces that I welded in. And there's one more weld up under there. And I know that'll disable me from taking them out of these, but whatever. That's not a big deal to me, because I can always just disconnect the center beams. And then these will be basically three trusses that are together but it's definitely a lot stronger. So I think this will do the trick here. Um, I don't really think that I'll need to cap these just because it's gonna be under the tarp, so. <clears throat> and covered. So hopefully this, these right here I mean, I'm gonna end up putting, I'll probably just grind these corners down a little bit. Um, I think the rest of this will be fine. Cause I don't think the tarp will get too um, bad right there. And I also thought too that um, I could end up putting, you know, just smaller, like one inch or maybe, yeah, probably just one inch, three quarter or one inch pieces every two feet but for now this is good is I'm taking the feet here and I'm gonna measure the halfway and then just run a line across and then just measure in uh, it looks like it's about five eighths of an inch and then I'm gonna stack these I'm gonna do that on two of them and then stack stack them three at three at once and then weld them together just, you know, on two sides there, just to hold them. And then I'm gonna drill through three at a time. And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, prep this, or I'll prep two of them, and then prep the other two. And, or I'm sorry, prep the other, the, the two 
posts that they're going to go on. And then I'll put all the posts on. Well, that's probably actually going to be after I paint everything. So I'll do that, and then I'll hit the whole, the whole top frame. And then, like I said, I'll end up uh, welding the post, cut, cut the holes in the, the feet, and then weld those of the posts, put the posts up, go from there. So.
All right, gang, my battery took a poop and died. So I got all these welded up. I haven't cleaned them up yet, but I'm sure you can guess why these are standing up so easily. That is all the metal dust from the last couple days. Some leaves, obviously. I got them all. And there it is. I ran out of white flex seal spray. <laughs> but most of it's covered. So I'll have to get it. Probably, uh, I would say maybe another can. Probably do two cans. Two cans, Sam. That's it. It's up. So now just to uh, dial it in as far as where I want it set. And then um, probably right there. I'm not going to go too much different because if I go too far to the left, it's actually going to be too close to the edge over there. I don't want it so close to the edge of the cement that it causes a problem when I drill into it and then put a um, an anchor, female anchor, which I don't think it will because when I had them pour this, some, uh, the cement, the driveway and the garage floor, it's four inches, uh, four and a half inches thick and they put rebar through the whole thing. And not just the bars, it's the mesh, the welded mesh. So it's the good stuff. So I don't think I really have any problems. I mean, I haven't had any pieces that cracked this whole time. The only thing I've had a problem with is my neighbor. <laughs> it's not moving, it's not moving, why not? And these 250 pounds had all his weight on the handlebars. I'm like, really, dude? So, that's almost it. You can see those supports that I welded in. Those are definitely going to make a big difference. And then um, I may end up drilling and uh, bolting those pieces together. But I mean, they seem okay for now. I think that once I get the, um, the cover on it, it'll be good to go. So, all right, that is it for now. Once I get it all painted and covered, I'll be back. All right, guys, welcome back. This is what I got done so far. I ended up uh, getting everything up. Beautiful wife helped me. And because um, I had to lift one side of it up off the ground and then the other side. And then, you know, kind of pound the post in. Definitely a lot tighter than the old system, so. But then I used what was it four cans of flex seal white and I didn't you know give it a super thick coat um, you know I wasn't looking for really too much aesthetic um, obviously it is white but I was mostly looking to just add a extra coating of protection um, I used carburetor cleaner and parts cleaner on a rag I just kept switching the rag and I wiped most of the lower metal down all six posts but uh you know as you can see there's there's some thin spots it's kind of hard to see but either way yeah that's it now um i ended up picking up some three eighths by three and three quarter anchors so I'm gonna go ahead and I also got a masonry bit, a 3 masonry bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, straighten those out for one. I probably should have done it before I painted it, but that'd be right. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, that one's to these two are totally off. I don't know how that happened. But uh, I got the masonry bit and I got the just a Milwaukee. I don't know what is up with my autofocus. Oh, maybe it was off. Okay. Anyways, so 
Three, it's by three and a quarter. I got 15, I only need 12. These are strong bolts. And I drilled the three eighths holes in there. So I'll probably end up, I'm not gonna go the full three and three quarter. That's just how long they are. So I'll probably go like maybe two and three quarter, three inches in. That will be the next step. And I will uh, show you a little bit of footage on that. It's pretty simple to do. All right guys, so this is what I'm doing. I've got 24 inches from the edge of the concrete for the first hole. And then I got exactly 10 feet from the other side. And then what I did is just took a center punch. Punched out the holes real quick. And I move it. About a quarter of an inch. You just thread the nut on a little bit so you don't mushroom the end of the threads. There it is. That's one. Go ahead and drill this other one out real quick. And then they say to use 30 pounds for the torque. So that's it. A little bit longer in this side. Oops, maybe a quarter inch. Um, here's the other side. And it's, it's pretty tight. Yeah, it's just got a little bit of a wobble to it, but no big deal. I think this will definitely do the trick. So, all right, I'm gonna get the rest done. All right, guys. That is it. That is it. I got all six post 
double anchored into the cement. I went down about two and three quarters of an inch on each one of them. They're three and three quarters long. Turned out pretty good. I think the only thing that I might do just to increase longevity of this is, you know, because I can undo these and pop them anytime. Pop them out. Um, I might pop these up and then put a bead of silicone around the base of these. And then when I screw them back down, a bead of silicone, I got some white stuff. I'll do it right around the base. And then that'll seal out any water. And then I'll put a little bit on the threads too. And then that'll seal out any water from getting into the, the cement itself. But uh, yeah, that's it. Wow. I think that will be a lot, lot stronger than the 22 gauge. This is all the, the um, 16 gauge here, but I mean, it's pretty sturdy. Sure, it's got a little bit of a, you know, it only wobbles a tiny, tiny bit if I give it a good shove. But, you know, I'm sure the $1,200 ones do the same thing. So, I spent $260 on metal. I'm not sure how many pounds of, of uh, flux core weld I went through, but I purchased, this is inch and a half, 16 gauge metal. And let me see, I believe I went through 11, 15 pieces so 15 well 14 pieces at uh, 11 dollars and then one piece had because they didn't have any more stupid me i should have got the, these side posts or these side beams i should have got those at the same time i was debating using the old stuff glad i went with the new stuff though for sure but i had to get one piece cut out of out of um, fresh it wasn't remnant because all the rest of the stuff was remnant, which means that somebody placed an order, they bought 20 feet pieces, I believe is what it was, 20 or 24, and then this what was what was cut off of what they needed for each piece, and so they ended up buying it back, Arlo Steel, or Alro, sorry, Alro Steel. They ended up cutting it, or they ended up buying it back, and then they sold it to me for 11 bucks a piece. So. There's only one piece, like I said, that I had to get cut out of uh, fresh, uh, full, linear size. And so that was like $23, I think. And then these plates down at the bottom, those are four inches round and they're made out of quarter plate steel. I drilled the holes and those were $24. So I believe it's right around $260 for all the metal. So I had to buy another Sorry, I had to buy another chunk, I think it was like four foot, of the one and three eighths outer diameter, and that was 095 wall, round stock. And that was because I didn't have enough to do these pieces here, because I needed eight of those. And I didn't have enough, so. But I got a piece of it left over, so <laughs> I'll be able to use it for other projects. And then I decided to put these beams here. I think I showed you guys that. That definitely made it a lot sturdier, I'm betting. I mean, I feel like it did because when I would push on this top member here, it would, you know, flex out. And now it didn't even, it didn't do, the only thing that was flexing were these pieces here. You know, cause I mean, they bend a little bit, but. I squared everything up. I, I measured out, like I showed you guys earlier. I measured from this line here, this joint from there to here was uh, 35 and a half inches. The guy that did our driveway, yeah, he got, he just measured it all out and snapped lines and then just cut, cut like halfway down, I think. Lines halfway down and so if there's any cracking then it would be at those lines. But they haven't shifted at all. He put rebar on the whole thing i requested rebar and he put it through the whole thing so so other than that yeah i just got done putting the tarp on i'm not 
real happy about this right here. I gotta figure something else out there. I wanna wrap, I think I need to wrap it from the outside. I, I might end up, cause these are, you know, it's got hooks on it. I might end up just welding some hooks down here and then looping it and hooking it there. But um, I ended up also buying four cans and obviously it's a little thin in some, some areas, but it's just an extra coating of protection. And uh, you know, I can always come back. You need 48 hours to put a second coat on. So I just put a decent coat, you know, just made sure it was all covered. Obviously if it's got thin spots, it's still covered, it's just thin. But um, so I did four cans of white flex seal on the whole thing, except for the other joints. Well, the actual joints that are from old framework. So, but that's it guys. Uh, thanks for following along with uh, rebuilding this thing. It was a pretty fun project. It took me, with all the welding and cutting I did, today is Friday and I didn't work like eight hour days on it or anything. I think I started it on last Friday. So, well, the, the Friday before this today, so a week of doing this stuff but you know it wasn't you know i did like i said i didn't get out there at eight o'clock in the morning and work till four you know i had other stuff going on so but yeah it turned out good i'm pretty happy with it like i said thanks a lot for following the old truck's protected now again and the main reason is this stupid little leaf linden it drops all kinds of nasty like nectar all summer long and then it drops all these little tiny leaves everywhere. And then when it blooms, it's got these like, I don't know, let me see if I can zoom in. And it's hard to tell. There's little buds on there and they end up dropping these little gold like flax all summer long. It's so annoying. <laughs> I mean, I wanna keep my truck clean, you know? But uh, let's see. That is so irritating to me. You guys don't even know, man. And the truck's not as clean as I like. It's do. It's so dirty right now. I mean, it's do big time for it. So. But like I said, thanks for following along, guys. Uh, just wanted to, um, you know, show you guys how I was doing this and how it came together. So, if you guys aren't subscribed, subscribe if you like the stuff I got going on. Um, hit the alert bell. Comment, like, share. For shows on social media, family, friends, you think you get a kick out of this stuff. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Take care. Come on back, and God bless.